Xiaomi was started in 2010. Today, it's one of the world's most popular smartphones. In India, it's number one. So I've come to its headquarters here in Beijing to understand just how this company grew so rapidly and how it can maintain its momentum. Xiaomi's rise has been meteoric. Just nine years after it was founded and one year after going public, the Chinese company became the youngest member of the Fortune Global 500. The tech giant is best known for its smartphones. It's the world's fourth most popular smartphone maker behind Samsung, Huawei, and Apple. But Xiaomi doesn't just make phones. Walk into one of Xiaomi's more than 1,000 global stores and you'll find an array of different devices. Almost anything you can imagine, they sell here in the Xiaomi store. I see virtual reality, walkie-talkies. This device translates languages like Chinese to English, voice assistant and smart home speakers, wearables, and even tools. Did I mention they sell everything? Since its early days, Xiaomi's founders dreamed of an international footprint, and now it's one of a handful of Chinese companies who have managed to do what many couldn't. It broke out of its home market and went global. Xiaomi's headcount has grown from about 100 in 2010 to a whopping 17,000 staff members today. This is company orientation, where employees learn about the corporate history and corporate culture before they begin in their roles. And just by the looks of it, this is quite a lot of people. Its global headquarters in Beijing is home to about 12,000 employees. I've come to Xiaomi's brand new headquarters, and it's so new that you can still see them putting on the finishing touches around the building. And at the base of this lobby, you actually see this. It's the Xiaomi store. The first thing that I think of when I see this store, well, it reminds me of an Apple store. We are different. We are very, very different than uh, the Apple. Xiang Wang is Xiaomi's global senior vice president and head of the company's international business. Apple is a great company. Uh, they, they do a lot of uh, technology innovation. We, we, are, we are doing the same, but our model is different. We want to sell as low as possible instead of selling at the premium price. That business model originates from Xiaomi's founder, Chinese entrepreneur Lei Jin. Lei Jin's vision was to create a premium smartphone that could compete with the likes of Apple and Samsung but at a more affordable price. This allowed Xiaomi to tap into China's growing lower-end smartphone market, and it wasn't long before it did the same abroad. Just look at this graph. In 2015, 6% of Xiaomi's total revenues came from outside mainland China. By 2018, that grew to 40%. The aim, to eventually have half of its total revenue coming from outside its borders. Xiaomi has achieved that by expanding into more than 80 markets. But it's India that is its biggest overseas success story to date. It launched in the world's second most populous country in 2014, where it held flash sales to generate hype around their phones. It worked. You only entered India less than four years ago, and you've become the number one smartphone maker. How did that happen? We offer a very, very high-performance device with a very, very uh, affordable price before us. If you want to buy a good smartphone, it was very, very expensive. Our model is to make the best product or sell as low as possible. That helped Xiaomi pull ahead of Samsung to become India's top smartphone brand in 2018. While it still holds today, Chinese rival BBK Electronics, which backs Vivo, Oppo, and Realme, could be challenging Xiaomi's market dominance. Outside of India and China, there's an additional 400 retail outlets, including locations in Dubai, Barcelona, London, and Mexico City. We opened our first store in Mexico City, actually uh, 4,000 people showed up. Wang argues Xiaomi's fan culture is what helps set the company apart from other low-cost competitors. From launch events to meetups for gadget enthusiasts, there have been more than 1,000 Xiaomi fan events to date. Here you have an entire wall dedicated to fans, things yeah. that fans have sent to Xiaomi. We always receive many, many gifts. Normally they are technology uh, geeks. A boy and a girl, they met during our fans uh, event. So the couple in Indonesia met at a Xiaomi event, yeah. named their child yeah. Xiaomi. Yeah, yeah. But the Chinese tech company has had its share of challenges, too, from temporarily withdrawing from Brazil to losing a trademark case in Europe against Apple over the name of its tablet. And, of course, there's the elephant in the room, the United States. Xiaomi has long said it plans to expand into the U.S. market, but those plans seem to be on hold thanks to the U.S.-China trade war. U.S. President Donald Trump has openly scrutinized Xiaomi's homegrown tech rival Huawei on multiple occasions. The U.S. market, there was talks about 2019. Yeah. 
U.S. market actually is, I think, no doubt, is the most important market for everyone. We are still very, very young. U.S. market is very, very different. We are working very hard, try to design a product for North America, but still, the resources is a big issue. Xiaomi made its name with a smartphone, but it, like its competitors, is having to diversify as the smartphone era's peak winds down. Smartphone shipments have declined for nine consecutive quarters here in China. So for Xiaomi to continue to grow, it sees its ambitions beyond the smartphone and beyond China. Actually, we are much more than a smartphone companies. We are the largest consumer IoT brand in the world. The company is putting much of its energy into the home of the future. From smart rice cookers to smart door locks, our homes are going high tech and Xiaomi wants to ride that wave. It says that it has more than 190 million connected IoT devices. There's five ways that I can enter through this smart door. First is through my phone electronically using something like NFC or Bluetooth. And then there's a number pad where I can input a number. There's also a traditional keyhole here, but I'm gonna be super unique and try my fingerprint. There we go. It's also taking on Samsung and LG with the launch of this smart refrigerator, which can categorize your groceries, play music, and even take notes. Xiaomi hopes that every room will have one of its AI smart speakers, including the bedroom. So the moment I walk in, the lights automatically turn on. Let's see if she recognizes me with an accent. Xiaoi Tong Shui. I got her to recognize me, and she just said, What's up? Earlier when I walked into the room, she told me, welcome back home, you must be very tired, go to sleep. She has quite a personality. The Mi AI speaker is Xiaomi's answer to the Google Home or the Amazon Echo. While Xiaomi sold nearly 3 million smart speakers in the second quarter of 2019, it still trails behind its Chinese rivals Baidu and Alibaba. This store was opened just about two years ago, but one of the first things I noticed is that just across from it, Xiaomi is preparing to open a brand new space, but this one will be focused on lifestyle products and things related to the smart home. While many of these products carry the Xiaomi name, not all are actually made by by Xiaomi. Take for instance air purifier company SmartMe. It's one of the 270 startups that Xiaomi invests in. Xiaomi helped SmartMe uh, in significant way because we use Xiaomi channel to sell our products. Its products are sold in Xiaomi stores, but also through its own channels too. SmartMe has grown to become China's number one selling air purifier. Consumer will know, oh, this product is really good and from Xiaomi. Oh, they also have their own brand called SmartMe. SmartMe even hopes to one day go public. And just like Xiaomi, SmartMe is pushing for success outside of China too. Right now, 41,000 of your products are being used in India and you can track this in real time. Right. It's startups like this that have helped push Xiaomi's international reach. How do you continue the momentum? You have to keep the innovating uh, spirit. Smartphone market is very, very, uh, very, very competitive. You have to do a lot of exciting things every day. Xiaomi turns 10 years old next year, and in under a decade, it's been able to do what many companies here in this country haven't done, succeed outside of China. But just how big this company can get, well, that's anybody's guess. Hey guys, it's Upton. Thanks for watching. Check out more of our videos and let us know in the comments what do you think about Xiaomi's rise in global tech. While you're at it, subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time.